Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Russell here, and with the Canadian election only two weeks away, you need to know about the new and changing taxes that you could be paying depending on which party wins. That's why I've gone through the platforms for the three front-running parties and compiled the information that could be most likely to impact you, including a uh, tax that could see you paying 3% more on digital goods and services, the government wanting a larger piece of the pie when you do well on your investments, as well as the interesting number crunching that's being done behind the scenes to make it all look good on paper. But before we dive in, a huge thank you goes out to The Peak for sponsoring today's video. If you haven't already heard of The Peak, they're a great Canadian newsletter that keeps you up to date on everything that's going on in just five minutes. I read it every single morning. Check it out in the description, but we'll talk about them a little bit later. First, we're going to start with the Conservatives plan and some of the highlights from it are a potential sales tax holiday, as well as a controversial change that would allow some real estate investors to actually not have to pay tax when they sell certain rental properties. But we'll start right here. The Conservatives say they want to make foreign tech companies pay their fair share of taxes, including a sales tax and a digital service tax representing 3% of the gross revenue in Canada if they don't pay corporate income tax here. Now this is an area that every single party seems to be tackling, saying these large web giants who aren't paying Canadian tax, well they should be penalized in at least some way. But what many Canadians are worried about is that when this 3% tax kicks in, these web giants won't actually be the ones paying it, they'll just raise their prices on whatever they're charging you, uh, and that 3% won't be penalizing them, it'll be penalizing the average Canadian, but the government will still get that revenue. The next big plan from the Conservatives is to implement a GST holiday, essentially meaning that in November or December, for a one month period of time, all purchases made at retail stores will be tax free for the month. The idea is that people will consume more at small businesses and spend more and help the businesses out, but at the same time, Canadians won't have to pay tax, maybe saving them a little bit of money when they're doing their holiday shopping. This next idea from the Conservatives is something the Liberals have really attacked heavily because in certain contexts, it sounds very bad. Listen to this, they say encouraging Canadians Canadians to invest in rental housing by extending the ability to defer capital gains tax when selling a rental property and reinvesting in rental housing, something that is currently excluded. Now this is a lot like something called a 1031 tax exchange in the states that allows rental property investors to sell their properties and not pay capital gains tax as long as they roll it into another larger investment. Now the context here in Canada is that the Conservatives are likely trying to frame this as a way to help with rental housing, right? L increasing the amount of rental supply and as a result, potentially lowering the price of rental housing. But whether or not this actually turns into lower rental prices here in Canada, or if this is just a way to incentivize people to invest in Canadian real estate even more than they already do, well, that remains to be seen because we don't really have the details on how this plan would roll out. Next up is the Conservatives' response to what they're dubbing Trudeau's carbon tax. And listen to this, it's interesting. They say that Canada's Conservatives will work with the provinces to implement an innovative national personal low carbon savings account. This will put a price on carbon for consumers without one penny going to the government. And this is how it's going to work. They say that Canadians will pay into their personal low carbon savings account each time they buy hydrocarbon based fuel. They'll be able to apply the money in their accounts towards things that help them live a greener life. So essentially every time you spend money on these things that could negatively impact the environment, well a portion of that instead of it going to the government as a tax as they like to put it, this would go into a new personal low carbon savings account and you would be able to decide what you want to do with that money, so long as the thing you decide to do is something that will uh, be more energy efficient. They have some a list of options here like buying a transit pass, a bicycle, or even one day buying an, electrical, uh, an electric vehicle with the funds that accrue inside of that personal low carbon savings account. And along the same environmental lines, the Conservatives say that they want to actually implement some brand new taxes, um, saying that they're going to study the potential for introducing new taxes on frequent flyers, non-electric luxury vehicles, and luxury second homes to deter activities that hurt the environment. But as always, whether or not these changes actually get implemented depends on which party gets put into power. And one party that's going to have to think about this is the NDP because they have some of the most aggressive tax changes of all the parties. But before we talk about that, I want to let you know about The Peak, today's video sponsor. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you might already know that I love The Peak. It's a great way to stay up to date with Canadian news. It's a newsletter that gets sent to your inbox every single morning, and it only takes about five minutes to read. It gets to the point, it's super informative, and it's written in such a fun and entertaining way that you'll actually look forward to reading it each morning with your breakfast. So much of the news we get is focused on America, but this is a newsletter that's actually relevant for Canadians, and the best part is it's 100% free. So if you're not already subscribed to The Peak, make sure to check that out in the description of this video, and additionally, it's a great way to support this channel, and it's 100% free for you. 
Thanks again to The Peak for sponsoring today's video, but now let's get into exactly what the NDP and Jagmeet Singh have planned when it comes to Canadians and their taxes. The NDP go on the offensive right away, saying that the Conservatives and the Liberals, while they're trying to make tax cuts, they're actually making Canadians spend more because they're cutting essential services that many Canadians depend on. That's what they're saying here when they say that that's what happens when governments choose to focus on false tax cuts and harmful service cuts. People wind up paying more out of their own pockets for the services that their families need, or they can't rely on the services at all. This falls right in line with the general NDP ethos saying that, hey, if we cut taxes too much, we're not going to be able to support Canadians, and sometimes it makes more sense to spend money as an investment in the social services that Canadians use. But they say that it's not going to be only Canadian citizens that are paying for this. They want to implement a COVID-19 excess profit tax that puts an additional 15% tax on large corporate windfall profits during the pandemic. Now, it's a little bit unclear how they're going to do this retroactively, but I guess we'd see if the NDP gets voted in as the minority government. Now this is where things get a little bit more controversial. They say that to make our tax system fairer and ensure that the wealthiest individuals are paying, paying their fair share, we will increase the capital gains inclusion rate to 75%. Let me break down exactly what this means. With this increase, essentially the government wants to take a larger portion of your gains when you do well with an investment. Uh, for example, if you invested $1,000 and it went up to $1,100, well that would mean that you had a capital gain of $100. Currently, you would be taxed on 50 $50 of that at your income tax rate. Now, the NDP want to raise this to a 75% rate, meaning that in that $100 gain, you would be taxed on 75% of that, or $75 that you'd be taxed at your income tax rate. Now, of course, there are tax sheltered accounts like TFSAs and RRSPs that make it so you don't actually have to pay capital gains tax, which means that this wouldn't affect those types of accounts. But there are certain investments that you can't hold inside of a TFSA. Um, one that comes to mind is cryptocurrency unless you hold it in some sort of ETF fund. Additionally, the NDP want to tax the top income earners as well as the wealthiest Canadians here saying that they're going to raise the top marginal tax rate two points. I think if you're making around $220,000 Canadian per year, you're at that tax rate, the top tax rate, that'll be boosted from 31% up to 33%. And they also want to implement luxury goods tax on uh, some rich person toys like yachts and private jets and ask the richest multimillionaires to pay a 1% wealth tax. Now, of course, a common criticism is that the wealthiest Canadians are the ones who know the most about tax laws and have the highest paid accountants. So whether or not this wealth tax would actually generate additional revenue for the government to pay for these social programs, well, that remains to be seen if there's any loopholes in the legislation they draft. But the NDP's solution to that is to give more money to the CRA, hoping that they'd be able to close some of these loopholes and be able to actually take advantage of the additional manpower to go after people who are using these loopholes. But now let's take a closer look at what changes will be made if Justin Trudeau and the Liberals get re-elected. The first new tax they want to implement is an anti-flipping tax on residential properties, requiring that properties are held for at least 12 months. Now there could be certain loopholes in this program as well, because they say this tax will be introduced and rules will be established to ensure that sellers subject to this tax are able to deduct legitimate investments in refurbishment. So this is a little bit interesting because it sounds like if you're doing a cosmetic renovation on some real estate and you want to flip it, maybe you'd be penalized. Whereas if you were to actually go in and fix the bones and some structural issues, maybe they'd look on that more favorably. The liberals also want to go after the highest income earners, creating a minimum tax rule that, so that people in that top bracket, again, if they're earning over $214,000, while the minimum that they can pay in terms of their tax rate is 15%. Now, currently, of course, that tax rate is a lot higher for these high income earners. But what you may not know is that high income earners, as well as other self-employed Canadians, well, they're going to take advantage as, as, of as many uh, tax credits and tax deductions to lower the income that they're showing so that they can pay less in income tax. Now, currently, they could potentially even bring that income tax down to a 0% rate if they're able to use enough deductions. But the Liberals want to say, hey, we're going to cap this out at a lowering to the 15% rate from your current rate at 33%. Next, the Liberals want to work with a large amount of other countries to implement a global minimum tax so that the biggest companies in the world are not able to escape the taxes they owe. Now, some people will criticize this, saying that this limits the ability uh, that Canada has to incentivize different companies to come work in Canada by lowering the corporate tax rate for certain industries we want to foster in Canada, um, because if there's a global minimum tax rate, uh, there's no incentive to come work in Canada when other taxes may be higher than other countries who don't have this global minimum 
minimum tax rate. They also want to force the most profitable banks and insurance companies who earn more than $1 billion per year to create and pay into a Canada recovery dividend that these companies would pay in recognition of the fact that they've recovered faster and stronger than many other industries after the COVID-19 pandemic. But even though there's not all that much information here on how this would actually work, it's one of the key things that the Liberals are leaning on to actually create new revenue for the government. Take a look at this table here. This shows all the new ways that the Liberals are planning on making some more money for the government. Uh, and you can see that they're really re relying on just three things here, the surtax on large banks and insurers, the Canada Recovery Dividend we just talked about, as well as additional revenue from the CRA going after uh, Canadians that aren't paying as much in taxes, uh, sort of reducing that tax gap. And you can see here that the total new revenue on this 2022-2023 uh, year is $4.241 billion. And while that $4.2 billion might sound like a lot, when you compare it to how much they're spending on new investments or, or new spending, when we uh, scroll all the way down here past all of their promises, they say that they're going to be spending $17.9 billion in 2022-2023 and only making an additional $4.2 billion in new revenue. Potentially because they knew an election was coming, the Liberal government was the only government to have the PBO actually cost out their plan and have these types of numbers, but this may actually backfire on them because it shows that, hey, the, the government's money that they're going to be able to bring in through tax revenue and changes like these, well, it doesn't really actually surpass the amount that they're planning on increasing spending. And of course, there's always the debate that it could make sense to spend more right now because we have super low interest rates and any investments we make now could result in a greater economic output in the future. But I'll let you think more about that and debate that yourself. But I'm really curious about what you think of all of these taxes and on what you think is going to happen in this election. Let me know down there in the comments section. I read every single one and I try to reply to as many as I possibly can. And once again, check out The Peak. They're a great newsletter and they've been great supporting this channel. So that would be a huge favor. But with all of that said, thanks so much for watching everybody. I really hope this video has helped you out at least a little bit and I'll see you next time.